Oh, is that Andy? You're still alive? I'm still hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. I'm also going to join with my other account. You mean the Vib Vab Voop? <laughs> yep. Ooh, I'm having a little problem with my headphones. Now recording. Now recording. Okay, can you guys hear me? right now yeah we still hear you so i have to change my headphones because it was making some weird sound okay let's wait just a couple minutes so more people can join hi Rumi, welcome if you guys don't know Rumi is my sister Rumi robbie <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's my big sister and it's the first time she ever joined one of my events and she's an english teacher so my oh, English is going to be more challenging <laughs> today you're gonna hear it after this event <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> we got the big sister sport. And can we in play music while we are in class? I was thinking while we are waiting, let's just play like a Twilight Elevator. soundtrack. Oh, okay. Am I period? I think I just... Hey, Angel, welcome. You're in period. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Let me take other vampires so they don't miss the events. Talk about Chris. Chris, Leah. Yeah, but Chris is very sleepy. He might be sleeping and join mid-event. <laughs> that always happens during your events, too. I've noticed. <laughs> He's always sleepy. Bro, I will take that as a compliment, though. Because Wait. I'm like a big sister. He feels safe with me. Yeah, no, of course. Hello, everyone. So, I think I'm slowly going to start the event for real now. After the events about talking about vampires. Oh. I, I kind of want to do like a reading for everyone. <laughs> I did like, uh, I drink coffee, then I decided, oh, maybe I should try like doing a coffee cup reading for a collective, like for oh all of God. you guys. I, I still haven't coffee. opened it. It's just next to me right now. Okay, <laughs> now Corinne says she's feeling sleepy. I swear, guys, I'm not sucking nobody's energy. <laughs> okay. Anyway, after that one, maybe we can do a little reading also. Since we're also going to talk about, like, druids. We, I have now druid runes. Maybe we can, you know, see what the vampires are trying to tell us. <laughs> hey guys, welcome. I'm so happy all of you joined. Okay, we waited five minutes. I think now I can start talking about vampires. Love them so much. And lately, me and Aleya are really... Like, getting into more vampire stuff. It's the light and dark cycle we live in. We go, like, hanging out with the angels. Then we go to hang out with the vampires. <laughs> go back, back, like that. Anyway. Okay, so, vampires. Earth vampires can be described as humanoids. Who have draconian, venusian, and terran DNA. But not only humans can be vampires. Any race can be a vampire. Because being a vampire is kind of like... Like, um, I don't want to use a bad word because I'm also a vampire, <laughs> but it's like having like, a, uh, <laughs> I cannot find like a cute word for it, but you know, having like, imagine like a sickness you have, like, <laughs> imagine like, uh, like a zombie disease, <laughs> any, you know, any race can have it like that. Okay. So there are many different type of vampires in this galaxy In other galaxies. There's lots of vampires being guys and as you can see here in this part when this guy look at the ear he ain't human because we're also going to be talking about draws dark elves yeah so you know some vampires uh <laughs> are very positive beings but it's not like a um, common thing on earth because most vampires especially on earth are neutral not evil neutral but doesn't it doesn't also mean that, you know, there are bad ones. So it's just like humans, you know. I mean, almost all race are like humans. Because there are always some good ones, bad ones, neutral ones. But most of them always think about themselves, guys. Never forget. <laughs> anyway, humans actually know a lot of things about vampires. Because there has been lots of vampire connections, especially in the past. But it's not happening much recently because... There was a big, like, vampire war happened, like, 500 years ago on Earth. So after that, vampires are being more private. But before that, there were much more vampire communication with humans. That's why humans know a lot of stuff. But they mix it with other races and they, you know, change it, turn into stories, stuff like that. But where the vampires come from, I finally found out. We come from Draco, guys. <laughs> 
So, I'm going to talk a little about Dracolith beans. Dracolith, the word means like Dracolith. Lit means like a limb, basically. So, Dracolith means part dragon. These beans were genetically created by dark dragons. They make like a first vampire beans also. Like, they were cloned and made for first generations of vampires to feed on. And they had this special kind of blood, and it kind of looked purplish, bluish color. And they used it to create, like, vampires and feed the vampires. And they made, like, blood rituals with it. And their colits mostly looked like human. But they had scales on their skin in some parts. And some of them had ability to transform into a f fully dragon as well. Just because they had dragon DNA and dragon blood in them. And shape-shifting in the uh, vampires actually come from here. Because some vampires can still like have ability to shape-shift. But not to a dragon. Because they don't really have much dragon DNA anymore. Uh, but they have other... Um, they can transform into other animal kind of like beings. Especially the druid ones. So, these uh, Dracolids were mostly negative at first because it, they were created by the Dark Dragon Empire. But some of them were always positive because, you know, no matter what you do, there are always some people waking up to reality and choosing to become a better person. And the positive ones were usually like outcasts, and some of them flew away, <laughs> ran away, and some of them were like banished away. And these ones who are like banished away actually like went to other planets and they caused like vampire evolution in other places as well so if we finally know where the vampires come from <laughs> okay i'm going to talk about dracula now because guys i'm such a fangirl <laughs> i am the biggest fangirl of dracula because i met him twice and he is so <laughs> super cool like oh my god i am like blushing thinking of <laughs> anyway Dracula. <laughs> Dracula, the word means, I mean, I already talked about it before, means the son of Draco, son of the dragon also. So, <laughs> Dracula is known to be the most powerful vampire by hum humans, and he has become a, like a big symbol in the vampire world from how powerful he is. And some people like write stories about him, some of them like scary stories. <laughs> and some of them are romantic stories, like I'm sure most of you have heard about the word Drake Dracula before. And he is actually like a real person. And he is like a very also big symbol in the vampire world as like a great leader, powerful leader. And he's the one who wrote The Love of Vampirism which I wanted to add more about the laws of the vampire world, but I don't know a lot. So I just, I'm just going to tell a little because I don't know the like real rules uh, fully. I just know the first rule ever. Like first rule is like, thou shall not drink blood of a thinking creature. So it's not allowed to drink like a human blood and conscious beings blood and stuff. And by the way, when I met Dracula, he's not the old dark at all. He is like, he had both dark and light around him like he is such a cool dude <laughs> and when he like the first time i visit him the second time i saw him he visited me and i was fangirling the whole time because i was like oh my god dracula cares who i am and he knows my name like how why <laughs> like i am nobody and dracula knows me i felt like you know <laughs> i felt so you know excited to hang out with him anyway after my fangirling moment is over <laughs> Yes, exactly, like a celebrity knows me. Guys, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know how <laughs> how excited I was while hanging out with him. And he was so cool. Anyway, let's talk more about the vampires now. <laughs> okay, vampire ranking system. So, not all vampires are same in the power state. And there is like a caste system among the vampires. So, there is the uh, power by rank or power by generation, pe some people call it. When a vampire uh, ter turns someone into a vampire, or if it's like a family situation where a vampire gives birth to a baby, the baby or the people who were turned becomes the spawn of that vampire. And if you become a vampire and uh, the vampire who turned you becomes your master. And... Well, if your master is still alive, you cannot really turn others into vampires. You cannot make your own spawns. You have to 
you know, you are the spawn. So <laughs> but of course, there are always different rules in different clans. So in some of them, it, it can be allowed. But it's not like they don't really let vampires turn anyone into vampires. It's not really, I mean, especially like right now, it's not really allowed to turn humans into vampires, for example. It's not really allowed at all <laughs> anyway. So master vampires, there are many different ranks in the vampire societies. The most powerful ones, the higher in rank, are the ones who are the most powerful are the clan leaders. So all vampires are a part of a clan. If they are not a part of a clan, uh, it's not very. It will be not very easy for them to survive in the wild. Because like imagine everybody lives in a closed city and you are like just alone living in the wild. If, if you would like that, because all clan places and clan houses like they are in this. They live in like small towns and they are, they get protection, they get, uh, you know, feed, they work in this, their own society and they have to listen to all the rules. And if a spawn gets kicked out of the clan or leaves the clan, it will be like super hard for him or her to survive. And if a master is not really taking care of their spawns, a spawn like might have to literally like feed off of bugs and like mouths and stuff like that so it can be very hard <laughs> so it's very important for vampires to listen to the rules of the master and the clans so they can live an easier life and be protected and masters are also responsible for their spawns since they are the ones who turn them or you know giving birth to them like their children in case of illegal activity a spawn can complain about their master or a master can complain about their spawn to their clan leaders and they are super strict like the rules are very strict vampires are actually very scared to do mistakes make mistakes because like the punishment can be way too harsh about the generation system i put like a little example so you guys can understand better so if you say like clan leaders are the first generation their spawn becomes the second generation and if the second generation spawns spawn become a master because their master passes away then their spawn becomes the third generation then it goes like that and the bigger the generation like lower the state the weaker the vampire becomes and after some time the vampire becomes so weak that they cannot even turn anyone into a vampire and they're not so that's why lower generations are not really allowed to uh, transform people, turn people into vampires. Different type of vampires. There are lots of different type of vampires and hybrids. And they have also very different abilities and shadow powers based on their power, their type of vampire. And every vampire gets their powers and abilities from their master. Because when you get the blood of your master and become a vampire, you also get his or her uh, abilities. Also, uh, if your master dies and another maybe master decides to like make you, you make you their spawn, you can drink and as you are a vampire, you can still drink another vampire's blood and get also get their powers as well. But it's a very rare thing to happen because it can really create difficult uh, situations among the clans. So. It's not very much allowed to drink vampire blood. Only when like person is chosen to become a higher rank, and they like uh, the clan leaders decide that this person can like become one of us, a clan leader. Then they gave they give him an, him or her a more like higher rank vampire blood, so they get more powerful and they get more abilities. So that way they become a clan leader like that. So most known vampire types, city vampires, it's just like a nickname. Vampires who live in big cities or closer to humans. And they are also warrior guard type vampires who are very strong and they are like the ones who are responsible to protect the vampire cities. Mage vampires who are very much um, like they, they are also, by the way, major vampires also work to guard the vampire cities because they do illusion magic, which they make their cities and their, you know, clan houses and vampire houses invisible to humans and stuff. And druid vampires. Druid vampires are like the most different kinds of a vampire. 
because like for example city vampires because most city vampires live in the underground cities they have been living there for a really long time so their dna evolution makes them sensitive to sunlight and stuff but druid vampires like exact opposite they just live under the sunlight like in nature in the forests they like live in trees some of them even so and they can or oh, they are also very much connected with animal life just as normal druids so they have abilities to shapeshift into different kind of animals as well and i'm talking a, a lot about them because i have a past life as a druid vampire and we slayed and we died in war guys Never forget. Okay, draws. Now I'm going to talk about uh, different races of vampires. I mean, a draw means like a dark elf or like a, some people call call them night elves. Not all of them are vampires. Some of them are just like not all draws are vampires, but some are because they also have fey blood, like they are fey beings. They are more powerful in magic and they also live longer than human vampires. By the way, you know, uh, they always ask me People as always ask me how long actually vampires live. And they're, it's actually based on their rank, like generation and how powerful they are. By the way, do you guys hear like background sounds? Children playing in the background. I'm going to close my window for a second, guys. Hold on. Yeah, I'm back. I closed the window. So the very weak vampires probably just live a little bit longer than humans. Not much. But the most powerful, like clan leader kind of vampires like they're cooler level <laughs> i know they can live up to like maximum um 700 800 years and a regular just a regular vampire like average is about 300 400 years i think and elves can live much longer a vampire elf probably can live more than a thousand years old i don't know they can live I think they can live up to a thousand years old am i a draw <laughs> okay uh i'm going to talk about them uh, I'm not 100% sure I, if I am a Drow, like from a past life, but I have definitely have a connection with them because I had a past life memory where I was helping the Drows as a vampire. I mean, there's a big possibility <laughs> I am also a Drow. I love them so much. Anyway, so Drows are very sensitive to sunlight, especially their eyes. They cannot really see well in bright like direct sunlight because they have been living in the undergrounds for so long time instead they can see amazing in like full darkness full darkness they can see very well like they don't even need a little light like they can uh, but they still have a little light in where they live i'm going to just show them soon let me see if i Missed anything? Okay, there's also hybrids like half elf, half human vampires. Okay, under dark. This is the place I wanted to talk about. This is the place I saw in my past life memory. So, under dark is a general term for underground cities which droves lived, dark elves lived. And in these places, there are moon towers, like a very big tower who, which goes outside and it collects moonlight. And then they use the moon tower to lit up the place and it l really looks like that imagine like this is like a moon tower i mean in my past I memory the moon tower didn't look like that but this is a very good example of a under dark under dark uh, draw city and they get lit up by also crystals and like there is also like light uh, magical lights who are connected to the moon tower and they collect the moon's light and energy and use it for literally like a battery for their magical lamps <laughs> to work out, work the city, you know? Oh my god, it is so beautiful. In, in my past life memory, I was in this underdark place, but it actually, it was a little smaller city. Not, it was not so big, but it was all empty because shadow beings have infested the place. And then we had to clean the place. and. The shadow beings broke the moon tower so it wasn't working and because you know the families live there like children live there we had to make them leave the place for their protection so they all left so this whole city was empty and in my past life memory we went there to fix the moon tower so we and there was this guy who was a draw and he still he was the only one uh, still living there and he had this castle like his master's castle his old masters actually and he was like you know no matter what happens 
I'm not going to leave this place even if I, you know, die. So he was like, I'm not leaving this place. So he was like also helping us around the city. And we were like vampires and I was a human vampire. But I had some people with me who were drows and also vampires. And we fixed the moon tower. And the moment like we fixed it, the moonlight started to fill in and the whole place lit up. And there was these borders around the city. And behind the borders, there were these like different kind of animals that I never seen. It kind of looked like half goats, half llama. And, and there was a herd, like they were all like running far away. I don't know, it was super magical, super beautiful place. And the, that past life memory is literally the reason why I am hosting this event right now. <laughs> because after that, I like uh, did us lots of research and stuff. Yes, it is being recorded. It was super magical, so beautiful. Maybe someday we will, we can all go visit <laughs> if they welcome us. Anyway, so okay. After the draws, I also wanted to talk about the tieflings. Tieflings. Some people call it different names. I call it tieflings because in the uh, like Middle Earth fantasy stuff, we call them tieflings. So that's the word I am used to. But Cash, I talked to Cash about them. He called them a different name and I forgot the name. So that's why I just wrote tieflings. So, you know, we call them different names, but we always talk about the same thing. <laughs> so tieflings are, I mean, by humans, they always known as like demonic creatures. But of course, just as like anything, not all of them are evil, but some of them really can be evil because <laughs> uh, they can become like incubus succubus beings if you guys know about them anyway so they have they really look like drawers actually with the ears and stuff but they have horns and also tails they have tails and they have also shadow abilities and elemental magic based on their racial elements because most of the tieflings known as like fire like they are they were like fire elemental beings but some of them are not. Most of them are fire, by the way. But I know some of them are like how blue skin, which are like water, uh, tiefling. But uh, I and I know the fire ones are like also can do like fire magic. They are also like have a little similar abilities with draws, dark with the dark elves, and uh, they can see well in dark. And also they live. Some of them live in underground, even deeper than the draws. They live in like closer to magma, very, very, very warm places, like little like hell. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so some tieflings are with connection with the drows and the vampires who live in the underground. And some of them are vampires. And, you know, uh, some of them are like demons, basically. <laughs> I mean, calling tieflings demons is actually like literally like a racial slur for them. So I don't like calling them like demons because they're not to me i mean a demon is not a race any being can become like a demon you know if they are like evil anyway <laughs> but these guys if they are demonic they are known to be like you know incubus succubus peoples and some of incubus succubus beings are also like can be like these are vampires because i mean they are energy vampires not like physical vampires because they do energy, uh, you know, sucking, <laughs> harnessing by using their, you know, abilities and stuff. You guys know. Okay, Rainwater has some, um, yeah, they have torn horns and tails. Yeah, and I think some Incubus Succubus bees also have wings. They look more demonic to me. Because I know Tieflings do not have wings. But it is possible, I guess. I haven't met all the Tieflings. <laughs> by the way, I love Tieflings and when I'm playing, like... Dungeons and Dragons and, you know, fantasy games. I love playing as a tiefling girly. Uh, sleep paralysis demons. I mean, succubus and incubus beings can become like a sleep paralysis demon, yes. But not all sleep paralysis demons are like tieflings. We call them like, they are like more shadow beings. Um, they call it like pa palace beings and ghouls. Ghouls are like uh, more like demonic, more like energy vampire kind of sleep paralysis demons. And they like feed off of fear, most of them. I mean, succubus and incubus beings do not feed on fear. They feed on other energy and emotions, like sexual... Anyway, <laughs> let's go to do... Okay, dark familiars. Some vampires can shapeshift into animals. And some have animal companions. You know, a lot of magical, like, 
mages and sorcerers, wizards, whatever, whatever you call it, magic making humanoid being have animal companion every time i am like oh my god that's the cutest thing cutest and in astral i have two snakes and two worms snake dragons i'm the snake lady <laughs> by the way this is where my snakes come from because bats are known to be like symbols of vampires in europe and western culture but in South America culture, it is snakes. They always see vamp saw vampires as snakes. And that's where, where I got my snake <laughs> a connection from. Also, draws, they have beings called displacer beats, beasts, beasts, <laughs> which are like very big, not as cute as our little bats and snakes. <laughs> it's like, oh, my, oh, I already put it. Let me show you. Okay. Displacer be beasts also known as undercats. They are little like black puma-like six, with six legs and they have tentacles on their tail. And they are fae creatures, like fae world creatures. And they were um, trained by Dark Face for hunting purposes. But I don't think right now Dark Face really work with displacer beasts. So right now some of them are like free like living in the wild in the fey world but some of them are still like um, pets or familiars of some draws and they're very big and very powerful and i love this art by the way i saw it on instagram this is like a draw vampire and they have like like a couple they have a cat and a <laughs> this place are beast <laughs> little detail in this art so this is a draw and this is a hum human vampire and look at the mirror like you can see the man but you cannot see her hair like she's invisible in the mirror <laughs> now we're going to talk about the dark powers but i love this art too because it looks like a draw and a shadow bean and this is like the moon tower and they're like fighting i just put this as a disclaimer because <laughs> dark powers are not all evil powers a power itself cannot be evil evil is the action that you do which has bad consequences <laughs> so it can be used as both evil and good, just as light powers. Because yes, it's all about intention. Because someone can have like a light power, but they can use it for evil. Just like that. And all vampires and all people who have vampire past lives have dark powers, guys. Like, it's just the reality. Reality of us. <laughs> so, best thing to do if you have dark powers. By the way, I think you can you uh, don't have to be a vampire to have dark powers i think like because all humans have dark powers like even if you were like a yin soul like a light soul you still have darkness in you so anyway best thing to do if you have dark powers is just to be aware of them so you don't you don't want to use them by mistake and some people like hum just humans you know who have like a vampire past life and stuff they have this thing to like suck energy or they don't really have to even have to be like a vampire. Maybe like most of us have darker past lives because we all go through darkness to see the find the light. So you maybe become have like a reptilian or demonic past life or something like that. You maybe like some people use it without even noticing, like doing like literally energy sucking vampire stuff. Some humans do that and they are not even aware of it. Because they are not aware, like, their consciousness is not very working. Like, they're, you know, they're in the matrix. So they're not even aware of them. So don't even, like, be scared of it. Find your dark powers, work on them. Be aware of them. You won't use it for bad things even by accident. I mean, if you did do that by accident, you're not aware of it. You won't be really much responsible that much for it. Still, they can, you know show up in your karma though <laughs> so best thing to do just be aware and train on it if you want which i recommend i am training on my dark power still and let me tell you because it is so fun it is so fun to train all dark power and like using your dark powers on the archons the best Mwah, chef kiss <laughs> so some of the dark powers vampires had the first one, the most, you know, known now, persuasion. <laughs> Mind control or hypnosis. So, when a vampire is doing the, you know, persuasion trick, it's not the same as commanding. Like, because when you're persuading, like, with your, you know, my mind control power, you are actually convincing them to believe you. you they actually believe you. Like, it's not like, oh, 
for a second my mind went to other place you know they actually believe you so if you do your persuasion correctly <laughs> i mean i i'm not going to like say like oh let's use these powers to you know make life easier no but you can use this power as like a secret spy maybe on the archons and stuff in the astral that was the plan with me guys i have been kicked out of my secret spy role <laughs> Because they they said, no, nah, girl, you're gonna be a, like a real warrior. So anyway, but commanding is a different thing because I trained all my commanding. When you do a command, is you literally look at them and you say a word and like use your power. Like they just listen to you like they are paralyzed. So you can be like stop, and they have their body is like stopping and they cannot move. But it only lasts for a little time. For me, it lasts about like 20 seconds. And after the 20 seconds, they're aware what you did. They're aware that you command them. They're like, they understand they have been controlled. So you only use that power in like bad situations where you have to, like a last resort. In other cases, it's better to just use persuasion. Arlen, you're right. I can be both. They removed me from the secret spy because I I got too much attention and they have been like watching me and I was putting the machine at risk. I can do that later again. But right now they're um, training me to become like a warrior, like a soldier. You know, for the mission, girl, I am not eye-catching. Actually, I'm just stupid. <laughs> I always de do the most like stupid stuff. <laughs> You know, the last time I was a secret spy, I was in New York. And this lady, this reptil arconic reptilian lady, and she had two kids. She tried to, to fight with me and I didn't fi fight with her. I was just standing and I was just, she, wow, she was yapping. And she made her children throw bricks at me. And I took the bricks and I threw it back to the children, <laughs> to their heads, like, boink. I mean, they are reptilian, so... You know, their skin is like, the kids are fine, guys. I, <laughs> they didn't get hurt. They're not hurt. They threw it to me first. And, <laughs> and I was in reptilian, archon reptilian suit. I have to act like an archon. So I did it, yes. And after I did it, I went back to the station and I told my superiors what I did. And I was like so proud of myself. <laughs> and they gave me the bombastic sign I did, and they removed me from the <laughs> And I, I still think I did the right thing. I, I, I am in an archon suit. I am wearing this reptilian look. I have to act like a reptilian. <laughs> it was an archon, and I did it, guys. <laughs> and it was like my, my first, uh, secret spy work, and I did that. Yes, I got a point. Yes, go tell them to the GFL guys. They removed me from the job. And reptilian stole my car in New York while I was there. Such a shame. I am in the negatives because of this job. Maybe I shouldn't be as <laughs> Oh my god, this event is recorded, right? Oh my god, every time, every time I am doing it. <laughs> now, the, if the Archons are here, <laughs> what I said, if they, you know, if they are like watching our events in secret, they're gonna be like, oh my god, it was her. But it's been months, so I don't think it will be a problem. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, before I say too much, again, let's go back to... <laughs> Go back to the dark part. Oops, I clicked famously. Okay, anyway. So, so you guys see the difference between the persuasion and commanding. And the energy sucking also. By the way, I think you don't have to be a vampire also to do energy sucking. I think lots of beings can do that. By the way, I also have... I can do energy sucking too. I did that one time. One time and he deserved it. Still people called me things because i did it but if some people bad people deserve it go do it i mean if you by the way if any of you have like an energy sucking ability and they you guys want to do that on like a dark being like a, a evil being like an archon or a evil witch whatever <clears throat> you shouldn't just suck the energy because uh, it can you know feel weird with you because the first time i ever tried to do it energy saying you do that your solar chakra by the way my solar chakra was hurting for real uh ash thank you so much let's start really <laughs> you gotta use like whatever cleansing energy you have or if you have an angelic uh light energy like how you can transform energy like if you have a draco dra draconic energy 
which you can transmute the energy and stuff like that. If you're going to do energy sucking, just, you know, transmute it into a better energy for you while you are, you know, <laughs> while you're sucking. <laughs> you can transmute, transform the energy. You can transform dark energy into dragon energy. You can cleanse it with angelic energy, you know, just a little tip <laughs> from your vampire sister anyway so shadow manipulation shadow magic i'm also going to talk about the shadow magic after that and more so creating illusion so mage vampires can do illusion magic and they can literally create an illusion bubble and they can literally hide the vampire cities and castles and stuff from others so <clears throat> you can also create your shadow duplicate your clone by the way I can also do this one. I mean, my master showed showed it to me that I can do that one time. But I never used it because I am I already enough anxiety while controlling one body. Imagine controlling two bodies, bro. That's too much work. Anyway, but I know when you create your clone, your illusion duplicate, it's like a blank sheet, but it looks physically exactly like you. You can like touch it and like it feels like you. Even the heat, like you can even feel the heat. That's so realistic and when you have your duplicate you can command it or you can make it mirror you so you can if you make it mirror you whatever you do it will just like make the exact exact same thing as you like a mirror or if you command it it will just listen and do whatever you i mean making your clone and sending to the missions like dangerous missions instead of going yourself that can be very you know smart because like when i tried with try to learn with my clone i remember like whatever touched her i was also feeling it like it was touching me like i touched her cheek and it felt like also someone touched my cheek as well so you can feel everything with your like clone that's there's like a very big connection it's not just something illusion anyway so shape-shifting shape i mean other than humans literally everyone can shape-shift guys <laughs> <laughs> Reptilians shape shifting, shape think. Vampires shape shifting. Witches shape shifting. Werewolves shape shifting. Dragons shape shifting. Why not? <laughs> I want to shape shift into a dragon too and fly. Only in the astral. I mean, we can do that. But literally, there's there are so many beings who can do shape shifting. It's such a shame we cannot do that. So elemental magic and weather magic. Druid vampires come here. <laughs> I mean, um, natural elemental magic can be done by a lot of beings. Also, like, draws and uh, tieflings also can do some elemental magic. And, by the way, I think, like, they also think count darkness as an element too. Like, or, like, shadow darkness as an element too. Anyway, so, weather magic, by the way, is super fun. I sometimes, like, me and my sister tried to change the weather once. And it actually worked. She's still here. <laughs> We made it snow, for real. And I remember I also, by the way, asked uh, Pixies for help as well. See, she said, yes, girl, we made it snow. We went to my uh, our hometown in the winter and we were really hoping for snow. And it only snowed a little, then it stopped. Then we went outside and we literally did like druid magic. <laughs> and the next day, oh my God, it snowed crazy. Like it really worked. Yeah. It is super fun and sometimes I make it rain and stuff. And I, I still remember the magical word to call rain. It was something like pluet. Pluet, pluet. <laughs> and some vampires also have healing spit. And when I learned that, I was super shocked. But after some thinking, it makes sense. Because, you know, it's, it kind of like felines. You know how they have like um, healing or cleansing like antibi antibacterial stuff in their spit? It kind of like that. And with the vampires, when they are like, you know, hunting the prey and they are like, slurp, slurp, you're spitting your mouth in the wound you make, heals it and closes that. It's like, ooh, almost like you never visit. Wow, magic. <laughs> hey, Eliyaye. Girl, literally, I am in the last uh, slide sheet. <laughs> shadow magic. Yeah, it is record going to be recorded. Shadow magic. Anyone can do shadow magic for real. You don't have to be a vampire, you don't have to be a draw, you don't have to be tiefling, demon, whatever. You can learn it, do it, and everyone can do shadow magic. So with the shadow magic, I put some little spells there, if anyone is interested. Dark light manipulation. Just as, <clears throat> just as you can create a light, or you can create like your aura energy, you can also create a darkness 
like a dark light and lately this is something i am working on and you can also manipulate and control darkness shadows just like how you can manipulate and control energy or light you can also animate one's shadow <coughs> you can absorb the light like loop nom nom i am eating the light <laughs> and when you absorb the light you can also like make darkness like that too seeing in the darkness also like a spell people can do <coughs> i'm sorry i have to drink water rumi says yeah you can do shadow magic everybody can but when i get the witch stuff no i mean i'm i was just joking with this sister if you want to be a dark witch go for it <laughs> but <clears throat> dark dark uh, witchcraft is not legal i will jail you <laughs> if i catch you doing any dark like evil spells I'm Jill. Nobody does illegal stuff in my <laughs> So, shadow camouflage. You can be unseen in the shadows. Okay, then it says, what's considered evil spells? If you are making someone act on a way that is not, you know, uh, neutral to them. Making some, um, like for example, love spells, I think, hell no. Making somebody fall in love with you with a spell? Hell no. Yeah, ew. Who does that for real? Like, how desperate are you? Anyway, or like sickness, making someone sick, making someone, you know, uh, poor, making people, uh, even there's a spell like making people love you. And I think that's still hell no. I mean, that's my uh, what I think. I'm opposite to a lot of spells. <laughs> but if you're doing like, <clears throat> I am like pro these kind of spells, like, oh, becoming unseen in the shadows, like you can do that to yourself while you're like in the astral or like you're like fighting with someone and you're like you can become a shadow you can literally like make yourself invisible and stuff like that i am so down for this kind of stuff but like dark witchcraft i'm like nah okay rumi is a witch guys <laughs> bitch burn it i'm sorry <laughs> call the church i'm joking by the way <laughs> because this event is recorded <laughs> i don't want to get in trouble again <clears throat> okay <laughs> i mean it's up to you your consciousness you can understand what is right what's wrong and what is your intention and for example there have been times i have been the ba bad person because i wanted like revenge i wanted to hurt people because they hurt me whatever there have been times like that with me too we judge nobody here but still though somebody called the church <laughs> we cannot call the church because we are muslim <laughs> We don't have church in Turkey. <laughs> Called the mosque. <laughs> I think the uh, slideshow ended, by the way. And we I put a queen in the end. <laughs> yes, my sister is a green witch. She's like a druid. We trust in Rumi. <laughs> and she doesn't make any spells too, by the way. She's, she's just learning. We support Rumi. <laughs> Dice had everything here. Yeah, create and control dark lightning. There, also. Okay, now I can... Take some questions, or if someone want to join the voice chat, they're welcome. To Angelic Vampire. I am an Angelic Vampire. Come on, bro. Literally, let me open the first. <laughs> Look what it says. Vampires by Ruby. The tall, light, gray. Angelic Vampire, babe. By the way, I call myself Angelic Vampire, not because I was an Angelic Vampire. That's not really a thing. I was... A guardian angel in my past life and i have angelic family <clears throat> and angelic powers that's my light side and i also have vampire past lives and vampire families and vampire dark powers so i am yin yang so that's why i call myself angelic vampire because i am i am both light and dark i am an angel and, and a vampire yeah and they're very equal too by the way i have like three four on each each of them yep that's true. Okay, I'm closing the... I will share this slideshow on the library now. Okay, anyone want to join the voice chat or ask questions? They're welcome. Aliyah, come join and we talk about the vampire. Aliyah is a vampire too, you know, guys. But I don't know if she has time or a space to talk right now. Hello, can you hear me good? <laughs> yes, baby. Hi. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what exactly to talk about because... I've been connecting with vampire energy again lately, but I'm not getting like super, super like vivid messages and visions, but something spooky that happened the other day. Um, so I know in my vampire lives, I did a lot of hunting. I, 
I think that's my role that I played a lot. I didn't really belong to like a clan. And Robbie confirmed that to me. Like I, I'm just kind of like a free spirited rogue <laughs> vampire that just goes on missions. Yeah. But I was outside the other night and there was this gr- like vicious growl. It was not a dog. It was not a dog. It It sounded like a werewolf i'm not joking it sounded like a very angry like beast and it because it it growled kind of at first like a dog and then it kind of like did it again but in like a lower like a more like intimidating like tone like it was trying to scare me and i was and immediately when i heard that i just switched to like vampire mode i don't know my instincts like my mentality everything switched and i i got excited like Oh, hell yeah, I'm about to like go on some missions <laughs> or something. <laughs> I was ready for that. So I know right now on the actual, like, I'm doing a lot of vampire work. So it's really funny that you made this class because it's really a line for me. You know, I am lately more into vampire vibes as well. Maybe we will go, you know, hunting together. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we did have the full moon. So I was thinking that was why. Because this happened around the full moon. Oh, a couple days and, ago it was, right? Yeah, it was a couple days ago when I heard the growl. It, it, I, I know, like, actually, I can hear Bing sometimes, especially when they're trying to scare me. They make scary noises. And I looked around. I gave a good minute to wait and see if it was any dogs or anything like that. And no, it was, it, there was no nothing like that. And it was literally right beside me. I swear it's trying to scare me. <laughs> okay. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. I also had a lot of problems with the werewolves in my vampire past life. Not all werewolves, though. I talk about uh, werewolves before. Some of them really, really had problems with witches, witchers, like um, fays, like magic doing humanoids. You know, they really had problems with that. They were, some wolves were like hunting. And some of them uh, really also not. Didn't like vampires as well. But it wasn't fully like, oh, all wolves are enemies with all vampires. It wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. And I, Cash also told me I actually have a connection with the wolf beings too. I don't, but from the Serious C wolves. Which I haven't been into much. We will see and learn in the future. <laughs> oh, Danny, you were too. <clears throat> Bro, you know we're Turkish, we have wolf blood. <laughs> <laughs> we have the serious sea wolf blood but anyway on earth though werewolves i definitely had some problems with that so and i know mm-hmm. some of them had like i mean i i don't want to like blame the wolves on uh <clears throat> i don't want to like say like